Okay. So, this is tonight's project. But what the heck is it, right? I'll tell you what it is. So, that is what we call a John Deere 400, or AKA an underpowered piece of shit. Well, not entirely a piece of shit, but at any rate, underpowered for sure. Comes with a 60 inch mower deck. Sounds nice in theory, except that it can't turn the 60 inch mower deck, or at least not under the circumstances I have. A lot of people repower these things. I would love to do the same thing, but it's time consuming and it's costly. Here is an eight horsepower Kohler engine that's not being used in its Cub Cadet anymore. I came up with the brilliant idea or stupid idea, yet to be determined, of taking that engine, pretend for a second that this is a 400, not a 200 series machine, and mounting the engine right there right in front and taking the PTO off of the 8 horsepower engine and adding it to the output of the front PTO of the John Deere 400. Obviously the theory being to get closer to 28 horsepower as opposed to the theoretical 20 horsepower the thing is supposed to have or excuse me, 19.9 theoretical horsepower it's supposed to have. So, anyways, first thing on the list of things to do this is the, or part of the drive shaft for a 60 inch mower deck from a Simplicity Sunstar that I scrounged up I'm going to take this slip yoke, which at first I thought was three quarter inch by three quarter inch. It's not. It's rectangular in shape. I'm going to um, put that rectangular shape into this wonderful piece of steel here. Uh, I'm going to use a trick that, or basically use a version of a trick that I've seen uh, tubal cane do in the past whereas I'm going to mill out all of this material up here also down to this dimension um, and then uh, the procedure that tubal cane used was he what did he use? Oh Loctite and pinned a piece of material back in here. I'm going to weld mine back in when it's all said and done. So anyways, that's what I'm kind of getting myself geared up for right now is uh, starting on that. Um, I thought at first I was going to just put it on the mill and just start hogging out material. But I think first things first, I'm going to get this piece of material chucked up in the lathe and I'm going to drill through it with not quite a three-quarter inch drill bit, but close enough. So anyways, I'm going to pause the camera, get this piece of material over there, right beside you guys, and I'll bring you back in just a split second in your time. All right, let's see what I can do here. First things first, whether or not this drill bit will even fit in this chuck. Oh, sure enough. Okay. I'll do a good start then. Oh, 
All right, so I only had a pilot hole started a little ways or a short distance. So let's see here. I'm going to have to go start out with something smaller first to make it all the way through this material. So let's get swapped out here. Kind of got ahead of myself a little bit. Been a while since I've done any machining stuff, so I'm a little bit excited about doing some. So I got ahead of myself. Can't blame me on that, I hope. Okay. Everything's stiff in the cold. I don't think I've ever even used this drill bit. It's a good opportunity. Now, of course, I'm going to have to reposition the tail stock to get all the way through this material. It cost a fortune. Alright, well, you guys have all seen this before so I won't bore you with this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera. Okay, I finally made it all the way through with this guy, whatever size it is. Had to reset a few times, but at any rate, made it through. By the time it was all said and done, I had like that much in the drill chuck. So, at any rate... It did what I needed it to do, so on to this guy. Oops, the right way. And it's going to be about the same thing. I won't be able to hold on to the whole thing ultimately, but I will start with it chucked up fairly well. And uh, go from there. <clears throat> So the lathe back down a little bit. Juice. And I'll bring you guys back here in a little bit. On a side note. I have finally come across a 5 horsepower single phase motor for the Hindi lathe and right about now I'm wishing I had it installed in the Hindi lathe. I have to kind of go a little bit slow on this. The 2 horsepower motor on this just isn't quite enough to get serious about it. But oh well, it's doing the job, it's all that matters. Okay, well, I finally made it through it, and in hindsight, that probably wasn't the best use of my time, but I kind of wanted this for another purpose than just removing material. I also wanted this for helping me gauge um, the, depth and, the depth and width that I was cutting to, because so, I was going to kind of lose track of... Um, how far I needed to go with the cutter on the milling machine so I was going to kind of use this as an eyeball in that regard also anyways this is a three quarter inch bit I'm only going to go in a little ways with this uh, this is the gauge that I was talking about right here Thank you. 
unfortunately this drill bit has seen better days, but that's life. Needs a little touch up to say the least. Okay, anyways, this is probably kind of warm, but I'm gonna pause the camera and move this over to the milling machine and start to get set up over there. Okay, so now I'm gonna just kind of eyeball this thing for the approximate center line on this and start cutting an incremental depth through. Anyways, you'll see. <laughs> Not that I can explain myself for shit, but you'll see what I'm up to here shortly. Okay. Just kind of eyeballing it for center. And I need to get some oil in this mill before I start it, it looks like. All right. Um, Safety glasses and my apron. Apron first, because I don't want to get fucking dirty. And safety glasses. All right, let's see what happens here. <laughs> can probably do the power feed on this. Don't remember how to use it. I don't think I've ever shown a video of the power feed in operation on this.
All right, at any rate, this is gonna take a number of passes for me to get through it, so I'm gonna pause and I'll bring you back later. Okay, this I think is where I'm going to stop for the night on this part of the project because from here I kind of need to start thinking a little bit, start paying attention as I start to uh, bring it to uh, full depth and full width. So. Um, let's see here. I don't think I cut as deep on this side as I have on this side. Let's go ahead and measure this real quick. See if I can do this one handed. <clears throat> Seven fifty nine. Okay. So I still need to go to 874, so quite a bit yet, on width. And theoretically, my depth needs to go to just about that surface right there. So anyways, it was uh, I was running it pretty hard on that carbide cutter, so there was a lot of heat getting generated, but it... Took it like a champ. And um, I think I've got enough depth on this thing to go all the way. It's rare that I use these carbide cutters uh, for any actual depth. This is one that I actually broke, I don't know, several weeks back doing another project. <clears throat> um, they're like really, really long. I don't think I've got any others up there. I've got a few spares of these, but it's in a tray or, yeah, hidden away somewhere at any rate. Um, these guys are like extra, extra long. So 
the fact that it broke off about an inch and a quarter or so of the shaft was not necessarily a bad thing. So anyways, I'd say that is a good stopping point for the night. And I'll catch you guys later.